Hey. Ready for some Swickling TV? Yeah. Been a while. Welcome to Swistling TV. Been a while, but we're back. Welcome to Swistling TV. All right. Very good. I better stop this. this guitar is too small to play anyway. So this would be uh, our lately. Technically, episode four. Yeah. Since we've been doing it here. Yeah. But we used to do this live on Facebook. We did. At the old location for the old location, time. Paradise before it burned. We did quite a few years, lots of episodes. We had live music guests. I think maybe up to fifty. Yeah, did. fifty episodes. We had live musicians show up. We had all all kinds of displays of new items, and all kinds of fun. So we are getting back into it with some uh, Swissling TV. So, um, here we are, back. Yeah, the only thing we're missing is Billy the Weatherman. Billy the Weatherman is uh, retired. So he's no longer here doing the weather. So, weather-wise, I can tell you that uh, we're supposed to get some rain here in Northern California soon. And otherwise, a couple of blizzards hanging out in Colorado. That's about what I know about the weather. Mm -hmm. Billy was much better at that. Yeah. Well, we got some stuff coming up. Uh, we're going to be going to A and M E again. Finally. Yes, this uh, which is what's A and M E stand for? Army, Navy, Military Expo, which is in Las Vegas, which is a uh, wholesale trade show where the industry gets together to show their goods, meet. Uh, they come from all over the world, and it also coincides with the Shot Show, which is happening in Las Vegas. A very popular show. Shot Show is uh, you know more of a gun related show but it's a huge show so they're both at the same time so the town will be full of of uh, military um, good friends and hunting uh, buyers and uh, you know lots of that stuff going on now we used to go to anime quite a bit but you've mm -hmm. been going to anime since before it was even in me when it yeah. was ASD it was ASD the Associated Surplus Dealers when I first opened the business in 96 Actually, before that, when I was working for another company in the same business, um, we went to the AST show. The AST show was a huge show. It was at the former Hilton in Las Vegas, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and it turned into more of a gift uh, show where the surplus was the smallest part. It got that big. Um, so then what happened is the surplus people felt a little bit underserved by the AST show. Uh, since it was uh, so more focused on gift items and and things that weren't so much related to the to the surplus, that they uh, about ten years back I think or so started uh, this A and M E show, which is truly Army Navy Military Expo, um, and not so much the other goods. Right, and uh, Switzerland used to have one of the biggest booths there. We had, right. I think, the most beautiful booth. Uh, it was the most beautiful booth. A good friend of mine, Scott, is a painting contractor and he is a very innovative person. And when I, the first year that we were going to the show, when I said, Scott, I need some help. I need you to design me a booth. He said, Swiss, I'm going to design you a castle, Maurice. So well, that's what he did. And the way it worked is that his whole painting crew and himself would make a semi vacation out of it, and the five of us would go three days early to the to the show, and literally build a castle out of wood. It was a big, huge booth, the most beautiful thing you'd ever seen. Uh, it was incredible displays and lighting, and people would come just to see our booth. Basically, you built like a an entire surplus store. We built the whole the store show. that was very, very beautiful. It gave the people an idea what their store could look like with our goods on it. We had everything beautifully displayed. It was a huge job, um, but it was worth it. We did that for, gosh, 20 years straight. But it's been five or six years now since you've had an actual display. Yeah, there. the booth burned in the fire, sadly, when we lost our whole town up there in Paradise. The booth burned along with everything. And my buddy who you know, that had been building that moved to Tennessee, and we just didn't have the energy and the, we, you know, we had to rebuild the business to, to really worry about the booth situation. 
Um, so this year we're just going in light footed. We're going to have a small booth with, you know, not the big castle, um, just to show a few things and get our feet slowly back into it. Um, cause it's a, it's a huge deal to, to make a big booth like that and get it all right. Yeah. Yeah. And well, this year we're, we're not just bringing surplus, but we're going to be bringing the waving fuel cans. We've got a section for the storm bags. Yep. We've got a section for the classic wool blankets. Exactly. And then, of course, the surplus as well. So we're, we're basically going to have four booths Yes. Uh, in one. We're bringing to the table, uh, to these stores, to let them know that it's always good to expand a little bit. And that's what's so exciting about Swisslink and Swisslink.com, is that we have expanded to different items that are fun and related somewhat. Uh, like our storm bags, for example, the automatic sandbag that I invented uh, years ago that... Uh, now, uh, made it to the Shark Tank, an episode on the Shark Tank. Uh, our wool blankets that are just absolutely beautiful. Our water cans, our gas cans. So we've expanded to items that a surplus store can still sell, but also that, that uh, people can find on our website. And that gives the whole thing a little more diverse approach. Right. And, I mean, the blankets and the fuel cans both have roots in surplus, right? I mean, the blankets... Well, absolutely. We used to sell the Swiss Army blankets and yeah. the fuel cans. We used to sell the NATO issue fuel cans. When I first started the business, it was called Swiss Link for a reason. It's because the Swiss Army decided to go from 600,000 men to 30,000 men. Our dog, that's a huge difference. They had equipment for 600,000 men for 50, 60 years, 70 years. Because they were surrounded by warring countries and by wars quite a few times and they decided we're going to stock up so well that the whole country every male in this country is going to be a soldier basically you had to be in the military if you were a male born in switzerland lived in switzerland you were in the, in the militia in the military right and you were issued the cost of staying out of war is being prepared being for prepared war. and scaring everybody out <laughs> nobody right nobody ever wanted to go into switzerland not only did they have everybody's gold in their banks. It's like, okay, well, you come in here, you're not getting your money back. But also, they uh, were very prepared. They had, uh, you know, every every household had full all their weapons, automatic weapons, their their handguns, everything in, in the house. That's low crime rate. Low crime that. rate, and they also had three pieces of equipment. So they had three jackets, three pants, three blankets, three. So there was one point eight million pieces of equipment for each, for the whole army had that much equipment. So long story short, there was a lot of surplus when they decided to, to bring the military down. And of course the weapons they destroyed mostly, um, uh, but stuff like blankets, uh, we bought. I had a good connection in Switzerland, a partner at the time, and we bought hundreds of thousands of these items over the years and pretty much sold every single Swiss blanket, every single Swiss wool coat, wool pant, everything you can imagine. Um, and this is stuff that they've been accumulating since late 1890s. So there was some very cool stuff. Like the salt and pepper backpacks. Were oh my gosh. Thing. Yeah, they were just incredible. We had container loads of them. But that's all history. That's all gone. Over the last 30 years, we sold all of it. And we were blanketless, to say. And I said, man, you know, these are such nice blankets. I don't want to just buy some knockoffs that are really not nice. And I went on a search for the best blanket maker in the world. And, you know, I, I found the best blanket maker in the world. I said, we need this best blanket in the world copied. Yeah, and it's not like you're just going to offer suddenly a low quality item no. when you've been making an entire business off of Yes. High quality military surplus. Right? That's exactly it. Our whole business model was high quality, low prices, cool stuff. And that's why it's fun to be. And high place. quality and low prices is a little bit difficult to achieve it's difficult. With, with new goods, right? With new goods, it's difficult. You know, I, I could tell that we used to sell the Swiss blanket for $9. By the way, they go, the original ones now go for $300. Um, and we used to sell them, we had so many, we sold them for $9. So, you know, then we had to make copies, and you can't make a blanket like that and sell it for $90, obviously. No way. But I found places, a, a blanket maker, 
so that we can sell them for twenty five dollars, forty dollars, um, you know, depending on which blanket we're talking about. And now you can get a Swiss blanket from us for what forty nine ninety nine or something mm -hmm. like that. Yep. And it's a beautiful eighty percent wool, sixty by eighty blanket. That's almost you know four pounds, uh, a little over four pounds, and that is really amazing. The quality is just as good as the old Swiss blankets, I have to say, um, and uh, just as good as any blanket that you could find out there. We also now, you are a designer. You went to school, got a degree in design, yep. and I snagged you from that world. I don't know how that happened, but you designed blankets for us. So it's just amazing, like you designed this pumpkin spice blanket for the holidays. Yeah, that was actually Veronica's idea. She was like, you know, we've got all these beautiful plaid designs. We need a pumpkin spice design. And I was like, okay, that's that's actually a pretty good idea. Yeah. That's perfect. So, yep, came up with this one. It's got that sort of... Uh, yeah, it's got a little uh, uh, tag on here that uh, has a little coffee cup. And so it gives you a bit of that holiday feeling. It's very soft. Easter egg there. There's a, a, a pumpkin spice latte on the label of the pumpkin spice yeah blanket, exactly nice. yeah. so you know you're making different designs which is awesome and they're very popular people are buying the blankets they love them they keep rebuying them so you know uh, we wanted to stick with high quality we wanted to stick with beautiful design and that's what you get from us you can buy a blanket like this from pendleton for 300 dollars, or buy ours for 50 49.99 right it's up to you uh, if there was a choice like that, I think I'd go with a, you know, Spencer's sense of quality is very similar. And then we have these beautiful carriers. You can have it like this in your uh, trunk of your car or keep it anywhere. It makes it actually look even nicer with this beautiful leather carrier, also made by the blanket maker. Nice thing about that is you can also use those loops to attach it to the bottom of your rucksack. Yes. And you can use the same carrier for sleeping bags as sleeping well. Sleeping bags. Or a bedroll. Mm -hmm. Or a really big joint. <laughs> that's, that'd be a little bit, yeah. But you know, you could roll anything up in here, sing it. But yeah, sleeping bags, uh, blankets, towels, and yeah. attach it right to your your uh, backpack. It's pretty cool. And, and getting these blankets made, you know, we went back and forth quite a bit on mm -hmm. getting the right like hand feel of the blanket. So we landed on eighty percent wool because with eighty percent, you still get all the benefits of wool, but. That other 20% of, of recycled sort of mixed fibers that we've got in there uh, gives it a nice soft feel. Soft feel and you can wash it cold and hang dry it and not, not lose the size. You take a 100% wool blanket and wash it in the wash machine, uh, it turns out to be a napkin afterwards. Right. Um, but this here, uh, and I, believe me, you don't want to wash it hot because, you know, it can happen too. But if you wash it cold and hang dry it, uh, we do it at home all the time because my wife has one of each one of your design blankets. I don't know why, but if we ever had to build a survival tent or a house out of blankets, we could at home. Yeah, eh, easily. Yeah. It's funny, every, almost everybody who comes and works here ends up buying two or three blankets. Yeah, they're just absolutely beautiful. You know, and they're great gifts too. Absolutely, yeah. Can't go wrong, wool is always gonna be great for you, just like our wool pants. So when you're on our website, check out our, our wool pants that we make. Um, that are also made by the blanket maker. Yeah, and I actually just made a video about the wool pants. Yeah, um, check it out. The finished wool pants, and sort of the quick story on that is that the finished wool pants are the, you know, the best. Yeah, finished wool pants. Swedish were both of the best wool pants ever made. Military. Yeah, pants. and we had basically the last supply of them available in the whole world. We bought yeah. all of them. Yeah. And then they all burnt in the fire, which... 20,000 wool pants we bought. I'm sorry to the world that we had sort of collected them all into one spot that burnt down, but of course we didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah, that was... A... So, the same thing. I was like, okay, we had the most beautiful wool pant in our warehouse. We were selling them every day. I literally bought uh, 20,000 of them at the, uh, from the Finnish army that were found in an old warehouse. They were all from the 50s and 60s. Um, and... So, you know, we cried some tears over it for a long time. It's like, okay, I'm going to talk to my blanket maker. I'm going to say, friend, could you turn some of this beautiful wool into a finished wool pant? Could you copy it? Meticulously over a year, we worked hard on, this, on the design and making it right. And folks, now we have the finished wool pant copy that is just as nice 
and I hate, I don't want to insult any Finnish wool pant makers that are listening to this, but they're softer and more comfortable than their military ones. Their military one was a little bit rougher wool and didn't feel quite, you know, it was kind of a bit of an itchy kind of a situation. The ones that we make is, is really great replica with all the protection and all the, you know, the extra, the extra butt and the waterproof knees and the stuff, but they are softer. So they're actually more comfortable. And better thing is, we all know that a soldier in his young age is usually a 32 to a 35 waist max. And some we had a problem with the right sizes when we were selling the original ones. Um, but now uh, we're making them to fit me. Right. So we yeah, have all sizes. Size. Yeah. So uh, it doesn't get any better. I tell you, there's something that gets better. A wool pan like that, that quality, again, you're looking at a three, four hundred dollar pan. Guess what ours is? 120. Yes, that's a hell of a lot better. It's a hell of a lot better. And it's a funny story with, with remaking it that we didn't have any on hand. So we ended yeah. up, I think you actually contacted a customer that we sold some to, that we had sold one to, mm -hmm. and bought it, bought it, bought it back, back. From them so that we could. <laughs> Get a good yeah. actual authentic sort of replica of the yeah. Of the pan. They had bought a few, and then I figured, come on, let's see if we can get some back, so we can actually have one to make a copy of. So it worked out pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So wool is still the best material, folks. You can you can get wet with it. You can have your wool pants. You can walk through a nice cold creek, come out the other side, and it will still keep you warm, because that's one of the things that wool does. You know, you see. Uh, a sheep going in and out of a, uh, you know, an ice pond somewhere on top of a mountain. He's just fine. And so you wear a, a wool pant, it'll keep you warm, even if you've gotten wet and you're in an ice cold environment. Wool works great. There's really no other material that works as well as wool. There's a lot of new um, high tech stuff that you can wear for cold that's really expensive and maybe lighter weight but when it comes to it uh, for quality for life these kind of wool pants are a, a lifelong pant you know it's something you can wear for forever yeah yeah and you know the pants and the blankets that we make are very sturdy as well i mean they're yeah. all double stitched everywhere and mm -hmm. will last you a lifetime if you want them to yeah well, we got some other stuff yes, here we do. that you wanted to talk about, so let's you look know, at it. Um, one of my favorite items have always been the German t-shirts, the German army t-shirts. They uh, are issued, of course, with everything else, a nice undershirt, t-shirt. And for years, uh, for years and years, it was the one that everybody knows, the white one with the, with the uh, right in the middle, it had the eagle, the German eagle on it. And that was a very popular one. And then at one point I heard they made this uh, Coyote Brown um, t-shirt with the most incredible material in it. You know, it's, it's cotton and, and uh, it's a mix of cotton and 68% cotton, 32% poly. And they were able to make this the most comfortable feeling material I've ever felt. I mean, this is the most comfortable t-shirt right off the bat. It's just amazing. So they wanted their soldiers, of course, to kind be... Of a, a little bit more of a heavyweight, sort of thicker yeah, shirt. Yeah, it's a thicker normal. shirt. It's something you would wear without, you know, you could just wear it as a shirt. Yeah, it's not, it's not an undershirt. It's, it's a not shirt. really an undershirt. It's a shirt, but they would, they would issue this as the first layer, basically. Um, it's just an amazing shirt. Uh, the comfort and quality is absolutely incredible. The stitching is absolutely amazing. Um, and the reason we didn't have it for a long time is that they were just hell expensive. German Army paid a lot of money for these shirts. And for the longest time, when they first came out in the surplus, they were really expensive. It's like, really? 20 bucks? 30 bucks? You know, I, I don't want to pay that. And um, so I didn't have them for a long time. And suddenly, I found this one lot of like 5,000 of them that we just got for a very decent price. And that's why they're priced decently. So look them up at SwissLink.com for a really good price. You get probably the best t-shirt quality in the world. 
Yeah, and they've had the, the German flags on both on both. They all sides. do have the German flags on the side, so that's just, you know, because it's, it's and there's genuine. The Velcro in the center was that point. Yep. The Velcro in the center is so that you, if you're just walking around your t-shirt, you can put your rank on there, you can put your, your uh, you know, whatever you need to uh, show right there on your, on your front. Right, so it kind of strips down the entire uniform to just a comfortable shirt. Yeah. Exactly. I bet every other military wishes they had that option. <laughs> oh man, yeah, this shirt's amazing. Um, I still haven't quite found one my size yet, but, you know, there, there's got to be some general that, you know, is my size possible. And I think these are available now already on Twitter. Yeah, they're right? on SwissLink.com. Check them out, folks. Cool. You got to, they're awesome. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes what we do is we buy... A lot of times I buy exactly what I want from the different auctions or different places around the world. And sometimes we just buy it by the pound. Whole container full. I gotta say by the ton, not by the pound. Right. We buy a bunch of tons of by the kilo actually. By the kilo uh, of military equipment. It comes in huge bundles or big sacks or in in big uh, bales. Uh, bales. And then we just Buy it by the pound and hope for the best. That's the fun of surplus. It's the fun of surplus. Uh, sometimes not so much fun as the, the days and days and weeks and weeks of sorting through it. Um, that can years be very laborious. Sometimes it takes years before we get to it. Um, and we just got to some of this stuff. And this is like one of the items that came out of there. It's a pretty cool item. I'm not. That's a. That's a. a a work uniform for someone working in the munitions. Yes, uh, it's from the Austrian sword. military. We got a bunch of Austrian stuff that we sorted through, and if you look at the back, uh, you know this is this is uh, written on there. I'll translate it to you in a second. Um, is this a little, is, is that a little high there. Is that in the frame? Yeah, this is bright red because this is something that an ammo. Guy would wear. He is Munitions Laborierungsstaffel Hieflau, which means this was an ammunition laboratory specialist uh, in Hieflau, which was, I guess, where that particular base was. And the guys that were dealing with all the ammo had to wear these big red uh, coveralls. But they're kind of cool. Laboratory, so people may be working on. Yeah, they're working rating. on different. Uh, yeah, Laborierungsstaffel. So it had something to do with uh, like a laboratory with a laboratory staff. and staff, and very cool. I mean, it's <laughs> where do you find that? The quality, of course, it's military, it's Austrian, it's incredible. Um, we it's basically had, the same as the OD co coveralls that we would get. Yes, Austrian army yes. coveralls. Incredible know. quality. It's just bright red. Bright red. Yeah. Uh, great stage clothes if you're in a band and you want to. You want to be up there on stage with it? It's fantastic, or you know, just uh, if you just want some coveralls to work on your car, and and these are incredible quality. Yeah, we we don't have very many of those, just a few. We just have a few, so you better order it. Yeah, if you want one, jump on it. Jump on it. And you know, other items that we get in, uh, like this is uh, is this our Serbian? <coughs> uh, Romanian. Romanian. Right. Yes. Romanian coat. Uh, with a beautiful fur collar. I mean, it's just uh, pretty awesome. It's got a, a liner in there, so it's a very warm coat. Uh, it's got a nice full fur. Well, maybe it's, yeah, it's full fur. I don't know if it's a rabbit or something, but let's call it full fur. I'm not sure. Um, T5 full fur. Yeah. <laughs> it's got uh, some nice flap over with button closure. Let me check this um, out. And it's got some cool. Uh, insignia on it and a belt just a really nice coat and when it's cold and you want to be comfortable and stay dry and be warm this is what you do you go to the surplus store you don't pay three four hundred dollars for some Gore-Tex coat that is thin and, and uh, will disappear at one point you get some surplus stuff for a decent price What's interesting about this one is the, the collar buttons on and off. Yeah. So if you want the collar or not want the collar, you know, you can sort of decide yep. for yourself. This one has an interesting sort of tag on there. I can't really read that. Romanian. Uh, Romanian something. Rumors. Yeah. Or, or it looks pretty cool. I'll put that is it Transylvanian, maybe? 
you know, the vampires at one point could have got into uh, coat making. You never know. <laughs> Those families had some money, you know. Romanian jokes, huh? Uh, yeah. But well, it's, Mo thinks that he's a vampire. He's got vampire teeth and he can't eat garlic, so it might be true. It's, I'm allergic to garlic. I do have uh, some that? vampire teeth. For... And... And this liner is really nice too for it's silky. Yep. Nice quilted. Things. Yeah, quilted Warm. liner is kind of like you kind of has the same feeling as like a sleeping bag or something. Mm -hmm. And so does also the it, the jacket is also lined. It's not like it's a raw jacket. So it's yeah. a lined jacket with a liner with also a removable quilted liner. So that with the, with the with the collar is like yeah, you can't beat it. Pretty good for cold weather. Pretty awesome coat. Plus it's got the belt. Yep. Um, and this very cool. Um, insignia, insignia of some I'm not sort. Really sure what that, what that means. Well, but it I don't either. Cool. I, uh, you know, we don't know everything about everything. We get so much stuff in here that we take a whole team to research. If one of you could tell us what that insignia means, we'd appreciate it. Yeah. What is, is that? A Romanian soldier among you. Let us know. Yeah. It says Academy something something something. We'll get back to you on that. We'll yeah, 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 yeah. Um, By the way, we have like probably 10 different Romanian parkas on our yes, website right we now. Have we have a lot of, lot of really ones. good cold weather stuff right now. A lot of good cold weather stuff. For you guys in the blizzard in Denver, give us a call. Um, you know, the Czech Republic is another country that I do a lot of dealings with. And what happened there is when the Czechoslovakia decided to uh, free themselves from uh, Russian influence and, and spread uh, and split to Czechoslovakia and Slo uh, sorry to the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Um, they each got their sh uh, you know half country, half of the goods. They had the same military before, the same uniforms, the same everything. They said, well, but now that we're two different countries, we have to get rid of all this and have our own stuff. So all the Czechoslovakian all the Czechoslovakian stuff. stuff now that there's two different countries, Slovakia and Czech Republic, they had to start all from fresh. So guess what? Uh, who got all their stuff? Uh, that was me. So I went over to the Czech Republic, to Slovakia and the Czech Republic, a million times. Uh, Prague was like my, my second home. I went four times a year for 15 years straight and just would pick up everything that they had. And we sold a lot of Czechoslovakian stuff. Um, when we were out of the Swiss, that was kind of a handy because now we had all the Czech, Czech stuff. And for a good a good 15 years, I got to... Uh, well, one of the traditions that I did when I first landed in the Czech Republic at the airport is go straight to the bar in the airport and have a Pilsner. Just <laughs> by the way, if you never had a Czech Pilsner in the Czech Republic, you haven't had a beer. Sorry, all other beer makers in the world. Czech Republic started making beers. We know it. They are the masters. I'm from Germany. And for a German to say that. For really me to is, say that, trust yeah. me, uh, a German beer is good. No question about it. But the Czech beer, there's something magic about it. Anyway, um, so... By the way, randomly, we do we have Czech beer mugs. We do. Authentic. We have uh, Pilsner Urquell mugs, and we yes. also have Gambrinus mugs. Yes. Authentic got from the Authentic. Czech I got them straight from the brewery. They're beer mugs. So check them out on their website. I don't think we have got that many left. Very cool stuff in their authentic original boxes. Right, yeah, they're, they're pretty sweet. We saw them in six packs. Six of packs. So, you know, there was a lot of Czech stuff that we went to. We still have a lot of Czech stuff now. We have Czech shirts, undershirts, uh, a lot of uh, long johns, and all kinds of things. This was a kind of cool thing here, just to show you. Um, these are syringes, uh, you know, from the medical department, and they're boxes where they, they would keep, have kept the syringes, I'm sorry, not syringes, they're the boxes, but they're so cool that I bought them because there's a stainless steel box that is very nice and still has a little holder for the syringes in there and you can use it for all kinds of things. You can put your, uh, gosh, whatever you want to put in there, they're just very cool boxes. Stainless steel in, in a couple yeah. different sizes. For those of you who like to hang on to your Altoids boxes, uh, this is like a one-up from there because, of course, they're stainless steel, like medical-grade stainless steel. Mm -hmm. So they are uh, very beautiful. And you can't really 
probably see on the camera there, it, but it's got a little etching on the top. Mm -hmm. It says original record um, with some sort of a check insignia on the top. They probably all vary quite a bit. Yeah, they vary a bit. And, and some still have this arrangement. Look at this. Look at this one. It still has it in there. No needles. No needles. You removed all the needles. Yeah, no needles. It's just medical syringes, you know, and a lot of people that work in with models, like model planes and model things, love them because they can use them to get their glue in the right spot. And so they're really cool. Um, I think a lot of them still have the syringes in there. And there's three different sizes, as you can see. This one, I can feel, has the syringes. So the uh, amazing amount of unusual, cool, high quality, again, things that we have is never ending. Uh, let me uh, get this bottle we, here. So I can we also have the check urine bottles. We got check bed pans. Yes, we have. We got all kinds of interesting. We have bed pans, urine bottles. Uh, oh my gosh, beautiful old medicine glasses. Test, test tubes. Test tubes. Beakers. We've got uh, those porcelain. Uh, yeah, porcelain. Uh, uh, where you mortars and pestles. Mortars and, mortars yeah. and pestles. I mean, just look it up, type check into swisslink.com and you'll see uh, even even a copper check hot water bottle. And when I grew up, I used to go to my uh, aunts in Stuttgart and they were ancient then. They were still, you know, they'd be 140 years old now. Um, but they had these because they would never heat the bedroom and it's freaking cold there. And, uh, but these were so awesome because you'd fill it with hot water, put it under your big blanket before you go to bed. And when you crawl under your, your feather deck of blankets, you would have it pretty warm because you have this thing here that emanates the heat like crazy. So we found some of these in the Czech Republic, military issue hot water bottles made out of copper. Come on, where do you find something like that? It's so cool. It's even got some of the green going on with the copper. The, that we all wait for so much for some years patina. to see some patina on there. It, very cool. I can't even tell you how cool this is. You could uh, have it open, and you could have uh, uh, you know some candy that you serve out of there, or fruit, or or use it as a hot water bottle. Uh, you know, use it uh, as what it's intended to. Um, it's really cool. Use it as a piggy bank and try to get your money back out. Yes. Very interesting. I'm not yeah. sure what to do with it, but it's very cool. Yeah, just fill it with hot water, put it under your blanket. Sometimes we just buy stuff because it's cool. Yeah, I mean, how we you, just want to have cool would stuff. you have not bought that? You're over there in the Czech military army base. <laughs> and I think a lot of people might have not bought it. And there's like, a, what? Who wouldn't? There was a hundred of those sitting there. I said, I'm taking them. You know, you can't help yourself. Yeah. Um, then sometimes, you know, we get offers like this shirt. What this is, and some of them have a patch also, is the Germans when they joined uh, the EU and there were the EU and the European Union, when all that happened, there were suddenly no physical borders anymore where they would stop you. And that was a whole universe, the German customs, a whole universe. They had a lot of borders, they're surrounded by other countries. So there were a lot of employees, there were a lot of custom agents uh, that uh, for a good, gosh, since 1945, basically, until about uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, um, were securing the borders and uh, charging you know, customs duties and, and, and living at the border. And those were the German Zoll uh, Polizei, there were the customs police, the customs agents, the toll workers. Pol uh, yeah, so they all got the same uniform and they were this, all this color. This mint green yes. German customs uniform. Everybody shirt. knew, she saw this color on a person wearing the uniform that it was a customs agent. Um, but here's the thing, it's made in Germany, it's made for a government agency, and again, it is the best quality shirt that you could possibly buy. 
there's it's just amazing this is not some something made in a far off land this was made in germany to be used issued to a uh, a customs agent that was supposed to wear this for its whole career and uh, these are all brand new because these were extras that they had and when they closed that whole customs deal and these custom agents were all let go or, or doing something else um, I bought all the shirts I got a lot of shirts there's a lot of agents and these are all brand new so we have the long sleeve shirts we've got short sleeve shirts yep. We also have men's and women's versions yep. of the same thing in white, because they yes. also have white. Ones. We have some white ones. We have a lot of them have insignia on it that shows that they're customs and uh, enforcement, and the quality is insane. But what's even we also got some some knitted vests that would go yeah, over got some vests that go over that, some V-neck sweaters. Mm -hmm. um, and what the most insane part about this is the price. I mean, a, a quality shirt like this with this beautiful. Uh, uh, what do you call this bellow in the back and it's just it's very low priced you can buy 10 12 of them hand them out to friends and you haven't spent any money and you have some serious quality that's what surplus is all about is about and I said it before but high quality low price and something that's unusual and fun that's why I like this business I started it in 1996 and I haven't gotten to work one day because I just love coming here because there's always something cool going on, always something different. I could have just sold toilet paper and just fill out orders, 10,000 rolls of that, go in there, 5,000 rolls of that, go in there. I don't think I would have lasted longer than a year in that business. This is fun. Folks, if you really spend the time on SwissLink.com and look around, you can share that fun with us and have a have a good time and, and get great high quality, low price item. We were talking about how often you go to the Czech Republic mm -hmm. and we're talking about the German Border Patrol mm -hmm. and we have a story recently about some time when they did actually have their borders kind of patrolled again which is right after the war in Ukraine started. We went to the Czech Republic on yeah. some business. Mm -hmm. We're driving back across the border. Was that last year? This was this last year. year. Last it was year. last year, last spring. Mm -hmm. uh, they did have the border patrol sort of back. Up well, and what, they were what they did is they checks. didn't have the border, border. But what they did is they had checkpoint. They had uh, the BGA, the border control police, had a checkpoint, um, waiting for people to come across from the Czech Republic. And we were coming across from the Czech Republic with a whole bunch of military goods in the car, mm -hmm. and they, they and the the agent was like, "Oh, what are you doing?" and and so, somehow, we stupidly responded with, oh, you know, we're, we're just buying some military goods from the Czech Republic. Yeah. Which is exactly what they were looking for and at that moment. For, and waiting for, they wanted to get somebody that's trafficking some kind of a military good between Ukraine and, 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 and Czech Republic and Germany. And they thought, oh, we got, we got ourselves a, a couple of traffickers or something. Right. <laughs> a couple of people from out of the country doing business. You know, of course, they're not looking for surplus dealers or whatever. No. But the way that the, the interaction started was a little bit, a little bit on the wrong foot. Yeah. Suddenly, we were surrounded by four guys with their big machine guns, and they were asking some very tight questions. Yeah. Yeah. But you won them over pretty quick. And then we yep. ended up sitting there for like an hour while yeah. we were chit chatting about the old days. Uh huh. <laughs> so yeah. That's how it usually goes with Mo. You know, he got pretty comfortable and. And then, uh, yeah, we're talking about old days when they were still wearing this and still customs borders, and we had a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, but it added some excitement to the trip. For sure. Yeah. Got the adrenaline going there for yeah, a few yeah. minutes, at least. Well, I think that's pretty good for that's episode good. four. That's pretty good. We're back at it. Episode four, yeah. Um, and uh, you want to leave us with a You guys want to tune back in soon? You got any gigs coming up? Pardon me? You got any gigs coming up? I got some gigs coming up, yeah. Alright, surplus, SwissLink.com.